Our reading for today is John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My sermon today is entitled, A Spirit of Truth in a World of Fake News. So I want us to talk for a moment about print. Good old ink and paper. If you are a student, or if you can remember back to your student days, you might remember the name Johannes Gutenberg. Gutenberg was famous for inventing the printing press in 1439. Now, this wasn't the first method of paper printing. Chinese inventors created woodblock printing and movable type centuries before that. But the Gutenberg Press remarkably increased the speed of printing. And I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that this invention changed the world. With the printing press, ideas could be spread far and wide. Ideas like those of Martin Luther, another name you might remember. Luther, who famously nailed those 95 theses to the door of a Catholic church, kicking off the Protestant Reformation. That revolution might have never gotten off the ground if it wasn't for the printing press. Suddenly, hundreds of people could read those theses. And perhaps more importantly, people could read the Bible, some for the very first time. The printing press also revolutionized how people received the news. Pamphlets, leaflets, and eventually newspapers could now be distributed to the masses. More people began to read and interpret for themselves. Now I'd argue that overall this is a good thing. Yet, as long as there has been the printed word, there has also been fake news. For much of history, fake news has literally meant fake news. It has meant propaganda and sensationalized stories, stories which it's important to recognize didn't always stay on the page. These lies and falsehoods have led to horrific action against almost every minority group, from the Jewish people to Japanese Americans to enslaved populations to those of the Muslim faith. I won't go into detail, but the history of fake news includes some monstrous atrocities. So it was bad. But then came the internet. Now, I can't knock the internet too much because honestly, I'm of the age where I don't remember that much before the internet came into being. I also have to admit, I don't entirely understand how the internet works. I'm also indebted to the internet for many things, including funny animal videos and the ability to deliver this sermon to you today. But I will say that over the past five years, I've become increasingly worried about the internet because we now have two different kinds of fake news. There is, of course, actual fake news, as it has been throughout history, stories that are just outright false. Although technology has added some rather disturbing twists, edited photos and deep fake videos, videos that essentially are seamlessly edited to make it seem like a person did or said something that actually never happened. 
it's becoming increasingly difficult for regular people to be able to determine what is real and what is not. Then there's also this term, fake news, which in this era gets hurled at objective and ethical reporting. A term that has caused many people to doubt professional journalism, a term which has also led to the decrease in reporting outlets that can provide researched, thoughtful news grounded in truth. In the past few weeks, I must admit that it has felt like our society has become even more untethered from reality. I wake up some days and feel really disoriented. Because when a president suggests that you should inject or drink bleach, which you absolutely should not do, and when whistleblowers who are saying that we need more well thought out plans on how to approach this pandemic are being squashed, you know we have a problem. So when I read this passage from John, the phrase spirit of truth just jumps out at me. Because some days truth just seems distant. In this passage, Jesus is talking to the disciples pretty soon after the Last Supper. And he's talking to them in the midst of chaos. That feels relatable. We're pretty acquainted with chaos these days. When we read the Bible, we often think of the Last Supper as a rather peaceful, calm moment. But in reality, it was chaotic. It was confusing. Jesus is giving the disciples rather upsetting information. He's telling them that he's going to be betrayed. He's going to die. If you remember the scripture that I read last week, Jesus tells the disciples that he's going to leave them. Leave them for something good, certainly. Leave them to go be with God, but leave them nonetheless. It's distressing to the disciples. All of these scriptures from John are part of something known as the farewell discourse of Jesus it's kind of a troubling moment. So it's in the midst of this confusion that Jesus introduces the spirit of truth. The Greek word here is paraclete, meaning truth or wisdom. The paraclete is one of the forms of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit comes to us in many ways. It's with us in our breath, our ruach, to use the Hebrew word. It's with us in nature, in God's creation. But the clear paraclete is a particular form. It is an advocate. What does it mean to be an advocate? Think for a moment. What does it mean to advocate for something or on behalf of someone? My mind immediately jumps to Brian Stevenson, one of the best advocates I have ever known. Stevenson, if you're not familiar, is an amazing lawyer and the founder of the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. Months ago, back when we could do this sort of thing, many of us from the church went and saw a movie called Just Mercy. It was about Brian Stevenson and a man named Walter McMillan. And in it, Brian is an advocate. He doggedly pursues truth. He runs after justice. He does everything within his power to prove that Walter McMillan is on death row for a crime that he did not commit. An advocate is determined, steadfast, active. I think about what we as a church did last week. Some of us went on runs and walks. Many of us wore white to remember and advocate for Ahmaud Arbery. We advocated that Black Lives Matter work, which is, of course, not done. Because just this week, we learned another name, that of Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor, a young Black woman, an essential worker, an EMT at not just one, but two hospitals who was killed in her own home in the middle of the night by police who were attempting what seems to have been an illegal drug raid in the wrong neighborhood for a suspect that had actually already been arrested earlier that day. My God, give us an advocate. An advocate actively pursues the truth, is determined, is steadfast. We know what a human advocate might do, their amazing work. 
but how much more steadfast, how much more determined are our divine advocates? Yes, advocates, plural. You see, Jesus was our first advocate. He says in the text that he's going to give the disciples another advocate, indicating that there was a first one, Jesus himself. He was the first truth teller. That shouldn't surprise us. Of course, Jesus was an advocate. He stood with the poor. He touched the wounded. He healed the sick. He ate with the outcasts. He died for the truth. Jesus was the first advocate, but he could not stay here with us forever. So he gave us the paraclete to be that everlasting advocate, one who is always with us. This spirit of truth, Jesus says that the world cannot receive it. Well, my goodness, we know that. We know that the world of empire, the institutions of oppression, the instruments of injustice, the establishments of inequality have not received the spirit of truth. We see that every day. Yet Jesus says that he will not leave us orphaned. He will not leave his disciples, disciples and his followers alone in a world of fake news. Jesus will give this advocate, this paraclete, which will help us be Christians, help us be people of truth in the world. Because Jesus knows that he's asking something difficult of his disciples. He's asking something difficult of us. It's hard to be people of truth, especially in a world and a time where so much untruth is around us. It's hard. But Jesus promises that we won't do it alone. We are called to be advocates. But don't be worried because we have the advocate on our side, the paraclete, the spirit of truth. And what you might ask, is that truth? It's love. Love is what is most true. We are made in love, born in love, wrapped in love, and we are called to act out of this love. That love can be a barometer for us, can be a compass. First John says, beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Jesus says in John 13, I am giving you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this you will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of these is love. That's the truth. Love, that's Jesus. Love, that's God. Love. We have been given this advocate, the paraclete, the spirit of truth. Therefore, we can determine what is true and what is not and how to respond. When we see chaos, we love. When we see bigotry, we love instead. When we see fake news attempting to spread hate and derision, we advocate for love. When we see one another hurting, we Love, when we worry about the future, we love, and we don't know what to do. And there are days that we don't know what to do. We try our best to love. Love, that's the truth. And there's nothing fake about that. Amen.